We're kind of like that crossover band where we can tour with a metal band. Like we've done tours with Obituary and Napalm Death, Exodus, but then we'll do like, like I said, Chromax, uh, Agnostic Front, Terror, and a bunch of the younger hardcore bands. And it's and somehow we're not out of place. And then we did a tour with like Five Finger Death Punch, and we still, you know, they're Megadeth, Anthrax. So we, it's good that we're kind of in between that because it's what I love. I love both both styles, you know, hardcore, punk, and metal kind of equally like depending on what mood I'm in or whatever so it's cool that I get to tour with all of those and just fit right in like where it's not like they're playing with them you know it's, it's cool in in your opinion if you had to like pick a riff that kind of sits in that happy crossover middle ground like what's a good example of you know the way that Hatebreed can embrace both everything that is hardcore punk and also heavy metal at the same time I guess like uh well, the, the, see, the metal one like that I played always played is like a newer one that people know. It's called Looking Down the Barrel of Today. It's a fucking sick great. song. So it's, it's pretty metal, but then it you know comes in, it's like... That's yeah, pretty kind of Slayer-ish. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then, you know, it just has basic chords in between there. So it's like there, there's a ton of riffs. I, I can't think right now. Like I said, something. But you'd have to you'd have to listen to the the full album. Of course, yeah. I don't want to give it too much away. No, no. I mean, this is a, it's, <laughs> it's the teaser. It's the, the yeah, little sample. It's the That's it. Like uh, old going way back is a song called "Not One Truth," and you know yeah. it's just like it's like fast. You know? That kind of blends it, I guess, if I'd have to say. And that's one of the first songs from way back, 94. That's back so in the day. So that's how it started off. People always say, like, oh, you guys are metal now. But we've always been on the metal. It's tuned on to C, first of all, back yeah. in the early to mid-90s. It's just not as technical. It's just simplified metal. Music's everywhere. It's everything. And it's, it's like the greatest gift you'll ever give yourself. If you teach yourself guitar, you take lily, whatever you do, any instrument you get to because it's something you're gonna have forever. You know what I mean? It's like, you might be into this, you might be wherever you are right now in your life, but you won't be there in two years, five years, 10 years, and it seems like it's fiction, right? Like, I used to hear that shit when I was, oh, you'll learn whatever. I'm like, yeah, maybe one day when I'm 40, I'll get into jazz. Well, I'll be 50 here and not that much time, so, you know, and I still haven't got into jazz because I got more headbanging to do, but. Yeah, I haven't seen you start your jazz side project yet. No. I haven't even started practicing. <laughs> no, I got a long way. It's, I don't know. I started as a drummer. And so uh, it all started for me with my dad showing me the Black Album. Like right when it first, so I was like two, you know? And, and I remember hearing the Black Album for the first time. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And it changed my life forever from there. I, went, I started to go as I got a little bit older. I stole the Black Album from my dad and started going backwards through the Metallica discography. And I had started playing drums uh, in like the orchestral band at school. So I just gravitated towards asking for a drum set. And then Lars was my guy. He was my, my North Star forever. And I know that people shit on Lars all day long, but I'll stab you. Don't say anything about my guy. Uh, and then at some point, I started realizing that like while drums are really cool and I enjoy playing them, like I can't really write a song unless I can play guitar. We've always loved the big, the big heavy riffs. So, I guess when you know 311 started, it was like we would have a heavy riff, but then there would be like rapping over it. Yeah. You know. So combining th those two styles, that was a pretty new thing at the time. You know, there was hybrid music we called it. So it was uh, that's kind of where it started. You yourself, like you were, you never really aspired to be like a, have a James Hetfield voice. Did you? you never wanted to like growl like '80s style like that? You were into either like rapping or melodic singing, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I've more of a baritone range. I loved uh, Jim Morrison. Yeah. I love crooners like Frank Sinatra. Well, I think by the time I was growing up, you know, I was a kid of the late '70s, early '80s. Um. We didn't have the internet, we didn't have TikTok or YouTube, but you know, by that time, everybody had a TV, obviously. Yeah. Most people had cable TV. Um, pop culture was everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
so you could not help but be affected by pop culture. And just from uh, songs I would hear in pop culture, I started getting interested in music. Back when music was ubiquitous, just uh, constantly everywhere all around you. and Yeah, it, so like uh, television shows and movies. Right. Like this, this sound right here, this is one of the first things I remember that got me excited about music. You know, the spy chord. Yeah. Or the, um, this type of riff, like... Legendary. The first band I ever really got into was just Nirvana and shit. Like, Nirvana is just one of the best alternative bands ever. I mean, yeah, it's, it's the riff that changed all of yeah, our lives. Yeah, it's yeah, literally, let's be real. literally, yeah. Essentially. What about you, Crab? Uh I got into guitar through Metallica. I saw them in 2016, and something about... That just, that, that kind of strikes you. Yeah, you like that low tuning Metallica. Yeah, that D shit. If an international band comes to your city, like you just, you go and see them. Like, and I feel like, it, I guess it's still like that now, I feel like, but now that we're a lot older, it's, you know, you see it from like the other side of like where the band coming to their city and they, you know, we get to meet fans now that go like, you know, I've waited so long for you to come to my city and, you know, just so happy you're here. And that was just us when we were 15, 16 years yeah. old, going it, to see bands. And it feels really cool now because we're in the position to bring our favorite international bands to our home and showcase them to our peers, our family, our friends. Like, we were seeing these bands when we were that age. So it feels, it feels cool to bring very, people out to Australia. Very full circle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys, I mean, not to self-plug here on a NotFest show, but you guys did play the first ever NotFest Australia. Oh, yeah. Where's Parkway Drive? Where's Parkway <laughs> Drive? <laughs> I swear, if we ask a single question and the answer is not Parkway Drive, something is very wrong, Oops. okay? <laughs> Everyone, we're hanging with Brendan Small, duh. Defender Bye, of the Rift with Daniel DK. Great to have you, man. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's nice to be here. It's nice to be uh, out of the house. Almost in tune, right? Almost, yeah. Almost, yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's a hot day. These are thin, thin gauge strings. No, we're yeah. testing the waters now. We're in drop B. <laughs> Hell yeah. I fucking love it. Yeah. Um, Chase Wilson, my dude, my dog. My guy. Run into you here at Aftershock. <laughs> 